Good afternoon and welcome to another Fertility Talk. As you know, this month is Fertility Awareness Month. And um, as part of it, we, not Fertility Awareness, sorry, Endometriosis Awareness Month. And as part of it, we are going to be doing a series of talks with different doctors across South Africa. And our doctor today is Dr. Maslaha, and he is from Hope Fertility Clinic, the Hope Clinic. And um, we're going to we're going to actually start asking questions but before we go to the questions we have for him um doctor welcome and thank you for joining us um we we're glad that you could join us today it's been the, it's the first one you're doing with us thank you thank you very much leanne and uh, good afternoon to the listeners and viewers okay. uh, thank you for having us here Thank you, Doctor. So just a quick one. Could you please introduce yourself of what it is that you do, where you're from? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm Dr. Matlaka. I'm based in the south of Johannesburg. Uh, I'm a fertility specialist certified in human reproduction and endocrine uh, through University of Pretoria. And my practice is based at the NetCare Malbatten Hospital on 25 True North Road in Malbatten. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, doctor. So we're going to go into understanding endometriosis. And our first question is, what is endometriosis and how does it differ from other gynecological conditions? Sure. Endometriosis is a big, big minefield. Yeah. It's one of the most common gynecological conditions affecting women in the reproductive age. Uh, essentially, it's the presence of endometrium like tissue outside the uterine cavity. And there's a criteria that we use to really, you know, suss it out from all the other, uh, you know, conditions in the pelvis. So there's a histological diagnosis that we use. We look at, you know, what, what we have in the specimen. You have to have endometrial glands, uh, pigments of the, of the blood cells, your, your hemocytin pigment, and the stroma of the endometrium. If you have any two of those, then you've got endometriosis, and then we can you know, treat from there. But essentially, that's what it's what what it is. It's the presence of the lining of the of the womb when you find it outside the womb. Yeah. Okay. Our second question is: What are the common symptoms of endometriosis, and how do they typically typically <coughs> present in patients? The 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 big thing about endometriosis is pain. Uh, so this pain can either be cyclical, meaning that every month together with your periods, or in, in okay, on occasion, it can be non-cyclical. So you're looking at in the bladder, if you have pain in passing urine every time you have during your periods, that should point towards endometriosis. In the womb, if there's painful periods, and, and that's the big one there, that's the hallmark, yeah. painful periods, Sometimes with other symptoms, nausea, vomiting, mood symptoms. You know, when you see, when you find it in in school going uh, uh, girls, yeah. then they, they even can't even go to school because of because of the pain and what comes what's associated with the pain. So so and then you can you can also even have it in the bowel, where every time you are going through your monthlies you have difficulty or pain, uh, it sometimes even passing blood uh, mm. when you go into number two. Mm. And then it can also present with infertility, which is a big one. And that's really the space that, that, that I'm in. Uh, mm. Difficulty in conceiving. Um, then you can have menstrual irregularity. So you have your periods, but it's irregular or it's heavy in flow. Uh, and, and essentially that, that's about it. But because it's such a big thing, it can even happen in other organs where you find endometriosis in the chest and people can have uh, coughing blood, you know, every mm. month that they're supposed to go. Endometriosis in the umbilicus. Uh, patients can present with uh, bleeding uh, in the in the umbilical area every time they go for that period. So, mm. so it can be anything, but the common, common one is pain in the pelvic area and the pelvic organs. Wow. Okay, so our next question is, how does endometriosis affect a woman's quality of life beyond physical symptoms? I've already touched on, on one of yeah. the issues uh, with endometriosis. 
So the school going uh, the girls, they, they, they tend not to feel too well to go to school and they can miss school. And that's yeah. a big one, everyone needs to go to school. Uh, yeah. In the working class, uh, patients often can make it to the office or to their meetings because of the excruciating pain and symptoms that they go through, uh, some of which we've mentioned. Um, and, and yeah, basically the pain that is so excruciating and almost debilitating, um, yeah. you know, disrupts life in that way. Okay, thank you, doctor. And then our fourth question is, are there any known risk factors or pre um, positions, predispositions for developing endometriosis? You know, the, the, the cause or, or the predisposing factors is not really known. There are certain theories that we believe uh, that we believe in, and 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 we, we look at them as as causes or predisposing factors. And the big one there is what we call transplantation of this inner lining. So this inner lining moving to other areas uh, that can be because of retrograde menstruation. So whenever you have your periods, you then see the flow coming outside onto the pad. But then a little bit of this flow flows backwards into the pelvis and this lining implants everywhere else where it's not supposed to be. And that's one of the greatest theories that we, we know to date. There's also what we call a lymphatic or hematogenous spread. So these cells can spread with the lymph drainage of the womb and, and the blood supply of the womb or the blood drainage of the womb to other areas where they're not supposed to be. And the last important one in this category is the iatrogenic spread, where during surgery, for example, during a cesarean section, because you open all the way to the inner lining of the womb, as you come back out, there's some sort of in, uh, transplantation of this, of this endometrium. Uh, the other one is uh, theories familial or genetic, where we see a pattern in certain families where the mom would have it, and the typical story is that the daughter will also have it. And the mom will say to the daughter, well, I grew up with painful periods. That's normal. Yeah. The periods should not be not should not should be painful. That's not yeah. normal. Heavy periods are not normal. Anything that's outside the normal sort of category of periods should be checked and looked at. Okay. Um, before I go on to the last question, um, what I'm picking up and I'm hearing from you, do you, do you feel that endometriosis is something that is um, misdiagnosed a lot or as in um, people are not it's, it's undiagnosed type of thing um, I'm not using the right word but people don't actually come and, and they don't know that they've actually got endometriosis until they you know get to the right doctor and actually do these yeah. tests yeah so it's very important one to 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 pick up that something is not normal yeah. Uh, like I said, most of the time people are told, you know, painful periods are normal. That, that's not the case. So the first thing is people out there should pick up that painful periods are not normal. Pain mm -hmm. in the lower abdominal area is not normal, whether during or uh, outside the period. Yeah. Um, and, and go and get checked out. The second thing is to approach medical centers or, or people who have the experience or the know-how of yeah. dealing with this kind of a disease because it's not a simple thing. Yeah. It's a chronic disease and it's quite dynamic and it's, it's you know, you, you need to have a certain approach. So yeah. when you come in, what we look at is is a, a good history, just on the history telling us what, what you're going through and what's happening. We should be able to, to pick up or point towards endometriosis. And there's been a shift now to say that you don't even have to have that specimen or, or go uh, through theater and picking up a specimen and sending it for testing. Certain symptoms and, and certain ways should be able to tell you that this patient is likely to have endometriosis. And then with treatment and response, that confirms yeah. the diagnosis. So that's the kind of shift that, that's happening right now. Okay, thank you very much, doctor. So on our last question is, how important is early detection and diagnosis in managing endometriosis effectively? I think you also touched on that quite a bit with this last um, response, but let's um, just yeah. go to that one. There was a break there. I missed the first part. How important is? Is early detection and oh, diagnosis yeah. in managing yes. endometriosis. 
It's very important because, like I said, there's there's no cure out there for endometriosis. So this is a chronic yes. disease. The earlier you detect this, the better you can plan in life. Yeah. For example, if you detect it, depending on which which age group you're in, if you are in your you know young reproductive age, you can even plan your reproductive life around it. And yeah. If you are done with reproduction, you can plan you know, your adult life and menopause around it because there's also another concept of endometriosis in menopause. Uh, mm -hmm. So so it spreads across, you know, a certain age group. We, we sort of talk about it between 15 and, and 15. Yeah. And, and we break it down there in terms of, uh, you know, decades of endometriosis and what do you do there. So it, it you, you, you can develop a, a comprehensive plan you can manage it. You can manage it uh, from the beginning uh, with medical treatment and sort of delay the operation because the shift now is that one should have one big operation that counts. So mm. the timing of the operation is is very important because often we've seen in the past patients would come in with about seven surgeries for lap uh, laparoscopies mm. for endometriosis. And they still haven't achieved that goal. Yeah. So by detecting it early, you can put them on medical treatment to delay the surgery and mm -hmm. and and time it really well, you know. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, I, I just love the way you're explaining everything, and it's very clear um the way you're putting it. So thank you very much for that. Doctor, if anyone is dealing with endometriosis um uh, or just fertility itself, with their fertility trying to conceive. How can they get hold of you? Um, patients can phone us at the practice on 011-682-4474. Uh, otherwise, they can you know, go on, on to the internet, Google our, our practice and, and, and send us, you know, con get our contacts there and, and send us uh, a request. Perfect. Thank you very much, so Doctor. So it's 011-682-4474. Okay, perfect. And so Hope Clinic is also on Instagram and Facebook. So you guys can yeah. go and check them out there, can follow them there and get some more information. And you can also mm -hmm. visit their website. So thank you very much, doctor, for joining us today. And we hope to see you soon again. Thanks. Lovely. Thanks, Likewise. bye. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, bye.